My name is Shifta Khalili, and this is Cal Earth Institute, the California Institute of Earth, Art, and Architecture. It was founded in 1991 by Nader Khalili, uh, the architect, <clears throat> my father. And, you know, the point of the work that we do here is to create structures and shelters for people in the world who have no money, who have nothing but the earth under their feet. So my father developed over many years um, different types of architecture using sandbags and barbed wire, super adobe, to build for people structures that are earthquake resistant, hurricane proof, flood proof, and fire proof, and that can withstand you know, any other kind of disaster because they're using all the natural materials and they work in tune with nature. So we are a nonprofit foundation and we are a school. We teach students throughout the year um, to build in this way and they go out in the world and they build for themselves and for others and you know everyone that comes here is people who are trying to think outside the box. They want to do something that's different than what is going on today because they know that it's not working. They know that we're running out of resources and that it's important for us to use what's available all over the world and that's the earth. So that's sort of the basis of the work that we've been doing here for many years and uh, my father passed away in 2008, but my brother Daston and I are continuing this work with a team of instructors and um, students, and it's flourishing. There's so many people throughout the world who need this, and we are trying to find a way to get to them. So good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to the workshop. Uh, we're really, really happy to have you here. Um, you're going to have a really amazing time this week. This house that you're sitting in right now was built. And the reason that my father built and designed this house was because he wanted to prove that this technology isn't just for the developing world. It isn't just for the poor people. Because, you know, it's hard to convince people to appreciate something when they think it's lower than them, that it's lesser than them in some way. That, okay, that's great, but I would never want to live in it. What does it have anything to do with me? I don't live in those types of, you know, situations. And so he said, okay, you know what? Let me show you. Let me show you what we can do with this work. And so they started, and he got this house fully permitted. And literally, I would say a few weeks before he passed away, this house got its residency permit. And one of the, one of the amazing things about this work was that my father was doing it in Iran, and when he came to the United States again to, to continue, he was going around giving lectures, and there was an opportunity to present a paper uh, for NASA at a conference for lunar and Martian construction, to build on the moon and Mars, and build colonies over there so that eventually when people go back that they can have somewhere to stay. So he decided to present a paper. You know, he had very limited English, and he was an architect. You know, he wasn't an engineer or a scientist, but he... He had a dream, he had this vision, he knew he had to present, he had to do whatever he could. So he submitted a paper, he found a way to explain this technology that they, so they would understand. You know, he wanted to build domes and vaults using the soil on the moon, but he had to go and say, I want to build single and double curvature structures using in situ materials, and so on and so forth. So he went to NASA, to the conference. And that day, the keynote speaker said, for every pound of material you take to the moon, it costs two pounds in gold. And he was inspired in that moment. He said, I know why I'm here. There's a poem by Rumi that says, Earth turns to gold in the hands of the wise. And he knew that he had to get up there and tell all these people these ideas that he had. So he went up there very nervous, all these engineers and people in the room, and he had eight minutes to give his talk, and he told all these ideas and people were fascinated. They had all these questions and he said, I told you everything I know, the research still needs to be done and after the talk he was invited to go for two weeks to study at Los Alamos National Laboratory um, to continue this research. So now that's what we're doing. We're, we have these workshops every month and we teach 10 to 20 new students every time and they go and my father always used to say that, you know, you're not one person, you're not one person, you're 1,000 people. Because when you leave here, you're going to go tell someone who's going to tell someone, etc. And a whole new group of people is going to come here again, you know, forward thinking, people who are really trying to do something, something different, something that obviously we know that what's happening now isn't really working, so what else can we do that's different? So the basis of this work is rooted in the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. And that the harmony of these elements creates 
everything that's in nature and that everything in nature is so beautiful and so strong and so we use those principles here to build. The way we've designed these structures is that you can build in a disaster situation a small shelter of say 8 to 10 feet um, in one to two days with a team of about 10. So we found it, we found ways to build very quickly with small bags in just a few hours. Um, but obviously if you want to build a very large house and you have lots of machinery available, you can build very quickly. We've also designed it in a way though that if you have no machinery available, it can be built by hand, the entire structure. Cal Earth is, is really on the map in a lot of different ways than it was before and you know the work that my father left behind were we're here to carry it forward and we've been able to deal with the building department and the fire department and the United Nations and all these different organizations who've come and they question and they say what's this, what's this, what's this and they go and they say okay, yes, we see how this is a solution, you know. And what we're trying to do now is we've had people build, you know, houses all over the world and we've done the research and we know how to build. Now it's time for this to be implemented in a larger way. You know, that's sort of where we're at right now is we're trying to find ways to implement this work on large scales because we know it can be done, we know how it can be done, and now we just need the opportunity to go out and build an entire community, build an entire village, an entire school, an entire hospital, and it's, you know, the whole thing to show the way you can connect this architecture using the material that's right there on the site, using the people who live in the local communities and that after you leave, that they can continue. That you're not, it's not like when I went to Haiti and every single person sitting in first class on the airplane was American. And you know, they went to go give medical aid or give food or whatever it was and they came back two days later feeling really good about themselves, you know? And I was on the way back like, gosh, when can we go back? We have things to do, you know? We need to go teach these people. I got to meet with the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, Yvonne Neptune, and he said to me, he said, you know what, non-government organizations, non-profit organizations cannot redevelop a country. No matter what they think, they cannot redevelop a country. It's up to a country to redevelop itself, you know. Nobody can rebuild Haiti other than Haiti. Haiti has to do it, or whatever other country fill in the blank has to do it for themselves, you know. And so when I was telling him that the types of work that we do is something that we want to teach the locals to build and build and to find ways for it to integrate with their own culture and their own you know, practices, etc. to build it for themselves so that when we leave it's continuing. It's not that we brought it and that we took it away. So he said, yes, okay, then that, that's something that we could definitely consider because if, if people throughout the world are really going to be able to be successful, they're going to have to do it themselves. You know, there's no way that the American people can come in and save the world. You know, we've, we've seen how well that's worked before, you know. You know, right now we're, we've reached this economic crisis. Here in the, in the United States, people have been severely impacted. Local communities around this area have gone, you know, people have gone bankrupt, lost their homes all throughout this entire area. So many of these homes that you see in this area are the short sale, owned by the bank, etc. And my father always used to say, how come when we want to buy a house or build a house, the first thing we do is we go to the bank to get a mortgage, you know? How come that's the first step? Why isn't it, how can I build for myself in a way that it will last my entire lifetime and my children's lifetimes and I'm not going to be stuck paying a huge mortgage to the bank every month for something that is going to fall down every time there's an earthquake or a hurricane. So what we really have seen this past year especially is a lot of people who have come here who are just fed up with it. They lost their house, whether it was in the fire or to the bank, and they just don't want that to be the case anymore. They want to do it and find a way so that they can build it for themselves, that they can use solar and wind and lower their bills and live in something that's sustainable that they know will last and that will also be good for the environment that isn't causing more carbon footprint, you know. And it's amazing. People come here from all over the world. We have a truly international community. We have, for every workshop, at least 10 countries represented. Right now we have a group from Spain that, you know, even knows, and then you guys have come here from some other place and you know each other. I mean, it's unbelievable how this world is becoming so small and that everyone is coming here, that we're at the center of, of a revolution, that it's a, 
a green revolution going on right now. But we've been here for 30 years doing this work already. So even though there's all kinds of companies now who are trying to put a green band-aid on the work that they do, you know, the work that we do here is truly sustainable. It's cost effective and it uses locally available materials. And it is a, it is a real solution that really needs to be accepted. This house has an address sitting on the side of it. It has a mailbox. I mean, it's a real house here in Hesperia. And it, you know, we even had an appraiser come and appraise the house, which was funny. You know, he came and appraised it as a property here in Hesperia. And it's valued much higher, higher than those stick frame houses that you had to drive by to get here, which is amazing. It's amazing. But this house is built you know, entirely out of earth, and we had to, ha we called someone in and had them come install garage doors on it and called them to install the kitchen, and those were funny days as well, you know. But, and the building officials came, and the funniest part is that the building officials who are so skeptical and are like, what are you guys doing, come out here, and they're like, oh wow, what are you guys doing here, you know? It completely shifts. So now it's, it's only gonna go up exponentially. I mean, like Ian was saying, we're overwhelmed with the inquiries. People who are so interested that wanna build. Every single time there's been a natural disaster the past couple of months, which is every week, pretty much, or every day, emails come in. Hi, I live in Chile. Hi, I live in Indonesia. Hi, I live in China. Hi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What can we do? I wanna build. Can you come? Do you have materials in this language? Can you send some people? Can I come? Can, you know? And we're like, okay. We really need to rally up the troops because the opportunity is out there, you know, and now we're at the point where people are literally trying to grab us and say, okay, we need you right now. So now that you're all here, at the end of this week, you'll be ready, you know, you'll be ready to be part of that. So the reason that my father came to right here in Hesperia in California was because number one, it's in the highest seismic zone, zone four. Uh, number two, the, the summers are hot, the winters are cold, and we get full extreme temperatures, we have earthquakes, and he wanted to build this in a way so that he could prove the strength and the integrity of these structures. So the building department came, um, we had tests done, it passed all the seismic tests, the building equipment began to fail and they had to stop the test because the structures were so strong. Um, We've been features on CNN, BBC, we've worked with NASA, you know, the United Nations has been here and everyone has seen what we do here and really sees the potential in it. Um, we have had success, these structures have been permitted to be built, we have blueprints that are available for sale that people can buy them and build, you know. Um, now that they've gone to an international building code here in California and once we get our plans updated to the most recent code this year, it'll be even easier um, throughout the world for people to be able to do this work. We've had it been built all throughout the world, and just for the fact that it was built here in California in this seismic zone, it makes it significantly more accessible in all the rest of the parts of the world um, because we've been able to prove it here in this very difficult climate. So, you know, obviously it's difficult. There's lots of bureaucracy, and it's difficult to get permission to do things, but our organization has integrity and we've been here for so many years that when you just show the documentation with a little bit of drive and a little bit of push, people have been able to get permits to build all throughout the world. So it's definitely possible. You know, obviously take some take some guts because the building department is is difficult to stand up to. You know, we know that who designs the codes are people who have their own agenda, the lumber companies, the cement companies, etc. But this work is coming and the resources are running out, so this is much more realistic now than it has ever been before.